To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the, the, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin? Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death? The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought. Hmm. And enterprise is a great pain and moment. With this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. from the eagle's point of view, is the period in which the curtain falls on your act so that others may evidence what you have demonstrated for those who demand a demo in order to be interested in your performance? You're living in the midst of death every moment we utilize this body. The body is constantly renewed and replaced. And if we were actually in it, we would go with the passing of the death. After all, the skeleton renews itself every three months, and we are hung on it. So, where does the old skull go? It's obvious. I mean, if we've got the skeleton, it includes the cranium and what it contains, I suppose. It's rather uh, an interesting thing to consider that we're living in the midst of a universe that is constantly decaying and constantly renewing itself, and we're going to meet death. We're meeting it every moment we appear to live in this. It's fascinating to think that you are conscious being, and not just a person with a consciousness of being. But then you know that you are external to the suggested you, and yet appear to be internal for that suggestion to appear to have company. To know that you are the external wonder to your most incredible artistic invention. You have thought yourself into a body. 
That, that is why we cease to think when we leave it behind. It takes our thoughts to put us into it. There, there's no thought left in it when we leave it because there's no thought in it in the first place. It takes our thoughts to create it and then you project it. And everyone else takes it upon themselves to, to accept the same projection and call it a similarity of experience. It, you call it the human form with, with the animal, vegetable, uh, and mineral kingdoms added to it for a little bit of variety. But when you can learn to experience beyond the form, you know the form is being utilized by a state of conscious awareness. If you can perceive that your body is, is a thought product, then you have met one of the greatest happenings afforded to the intellectual might of the suggested human. To know that you are a thought product and yet live beyond it. How? Because, because you can change your thoughts. Now, well, anything that changes is unreal. Oh, that is why oh, the love that is never changes. That is why the soul that is never changes. That is why the truth that is never changes. That is why the, the mind that is never changes. That is why the principle that is never changes. Anything that changes oh, is unreal. Oh. We all know that, that this human form is uh, changing. <laughs> we all know it is imbued with the same life and death as the prime interests of being human, birth and death. And in between, you're supposed to have uh, growth, maturity, and decay. But, but if, you, if you know the basis of this is mortal and therefore changing, why are you basing your life on it? Everything you do is based on a principle that isn't so. I've got to be my own person. I've got to be an artist. I've got to be an actor. I've got to be a dancer. <laughs> you know? You haven't got to be any of those things. You've got the... Uh, to be or not to be, as a result of false education, that this inner longing is what should motivate you. It's not the longing to be something, to gain attention. It's to be. Evidenced by whatever art you claim to be a part of your destiny. It's fulfilled in being artless and allowing the art to form an exit from the suggestion of, of a limited framing of time. We frame ourselves. We frame ourselves into the most gilded conditions. A, a lawyer, a doctor, an Indian chief, uh, an actor. With what? Look how we frame ourselves. With what? With the responsibilities of our thought products. If consciousness were not eternal, there would be no way of keeping the torch forever aflame. So just accept the fact. Uh, you, you don't have to understand it. Uh, understanding it is one of the ways that we've been framed. We've been framed into thinking that we have to understand before we accept. Accept. Then experience. And then you can say you have an understanding. But what you do after you have accepted and experienced is expressed. And then, that is what others may call your understanding, but understanding is never yours. Understanding is simply what stands before you. Oh, well, life is continuous.
you are actually a living form of a transcendent experience that you can share with others by your presence. Man is part of the remembrance pattern. He has no way of being other than real, but he has been framed. He, he has been framed to thinking that he can think any way he wishes, and that is not true. You were given the ability of cognition and, and then of perception, and then of conception. And then you could tell how an object appeared outside of you. But you could not see yourself. If God had wanted you to fall for yourself, he would have allowed you to get used to seeing your own face instead of seeing it reversed in the mirror. In the mirror, a picture is the exact opposite of what you are. In the mirror, you are a flat surface. Well, now can you understand why it's important to develop a sense of, of perspective? We say we look at, at each other's faces. That's in the wholeness. But if I'm looking at you, you appear to be looking at me in one way, but our eyes are opposite. If I'm looking at you, and you're looking at me, you know what's, what's left and right are two different things. That's why we don't bother with opposites, even in sight. We don't deal with opposites in sight, because if we did, we would have to weigh it into our agenda of living. When I look at you, I don't see oppositeness. It's so much simpler. It does, however, make you a real target. Because someone will never understand someone who treats them with the wonder of the immaterial, immortal presence. Everyone I meet, I meet as someone whom I cognize as my own response to a form that, in essence, is nothing but love. Well, what's, what's so wrong with that? Most of us are, are under this framework that we are functioning under, under a limited uh, sensations and limited expressions. You are only the expression that I am. I am only an expression of that which I am. How do I know that I am an expression of that which I am? It's not in the form, don't be fooled. It's by the essence that allows the form to intone a meaning that is commensurate with the greater feeling of being I am. It's fascinating that we all fall for the semen, but give it all our attention when it goes to the dreamer. Here's what your job is. Be the pulsating heartthrob to the unknown wholeness of being I am. It's only by us that anyone knows the unknown lives, and the unknown lives as us. What is your agenda that you have made up in this scheme regarding your framed sense of mortality? Death. Death is only the garment life wears. The stage setting changes. To be or not to be. That is your question. And now I realize there isn't one. You have to strip away the camouflage to realize that that statement is one to wake you up. If you do not know that you are to be, how can you say the rest of it? Uh, 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 if you do not know that you are to be, you are evidence of it. Uh, not to be. If you do not think you are to be, then the answer is not to be. And if you are not to be, why do you think you are? Why do you think you are? There is not one here or anyone in this world that does not know he or she is. Why, you ask? Well, I think, therefore I am. Uh -huh. I think, therefore I appear to think. I think, therefore I appear to think. 
And what is this appearance brought with it? The hope of the future. For I have appeared to think a new song. And with it, the hope that thinking can change. And if thinking can change, it can pass. And how can we stop this passing from a continuous life and death and life and death and life and death cycle? <laughs> By thinking. Is this experience a focused, creative, artistic action? And if you say, oh my goodness, I don't know, I don't think it is, I don't know what I'm doing, then you consult, not with a prophet, not with a prophetess, but with one who can turn your attention to the wonder of a sound body.